Welcome to the Daily Update. We'll I'll go over the action in the market for Tuesday, March 12th, and then we'll see how things look for Wednesday, March 13th. The S&P closed at another new all-time high, not an intraday high, but it didn't really see a big participation by the broad market. The CPI report came out, and they were able to figure out a way to turn it around and make it look positive. That really helped the mega caps and the semiconductors and semiconductor related stocks to go much higher. That pushed the S&P up and ended up giving us a new all-time high. Let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we had a gap higher open above R1 at 5131. Then we fell down to the unchanged level, which on an up day, in this case, acted as support. Then we climbed back above R1, and we got above R2 at 51.45. We did hit some resistance at 51.70, and we retreated down to R2. So on an intraday basis, R2 now became support. We bounced up off of that. We climbed to R3 at 51.80, and we closed just a little bit below R3. We were up 1.12% on below average volume. This is another concern. Now, it's more positive these days when we have a decline on below average volume. It's seen as more negative when we really advance on below average volume. It just means there's not an awful lot of conviction in the market right now. So that's a bit of a warning sign. We are positive with our technicals. We do have a little longer list of some of the extreme positive readings right now. And inflation and interest rates, the market seems to like what's happening for right now with that. Even though CPI came in hot, they looked inside of the shelter index and they're thinking, well, it's going to go down in the future. So we're okay with this current scenario that the Fed is done raising rates and they're probably going to cut them at some point in 2024. And that was the rationally, rationalization that was used to drive prices higher, at least for the S&P. Some comments that we can make. We did set a new all-time high for the S&P. Mega caps and semiconductor-related stocks also had a good day. The CPI did come in hot, but the market still found a way to like it anyway. Here's our short-term list. The Williams percent are the CCI 14 and 20. Those are a new additions to the list. The stochastics, which has been on the list, and then our 20-period exponential moving average. So this, we're seeing a bit of an expansion here. We're also seeing a little, eh, not really a big change here with the intermediate term list. We have our 50-period exponential moving average. Our oscillators are still just going sideways, but giving us extreme positive readings. The bullish percent index, the Sean trend meter, and then the 10-period new high, new low study. Long term, no real changes here. The 150 based on the simple moving average, and then we have the 200 period exponential and simple moving averages, which are looking extreme. This is the same scenario, scenario that the Fed has probably done raising rates. They may cut them. There's some holdouts thinking that it may happen at the May meeting. There's even a few thinking it might happen in March, but that's looking a little too optimistic, I guess, for right now, according to what the market is thinking. The dollar was down and interest rates were actually up. So this is one of those days where we saw the 10-year yield climb. It closed at 4.16% and stocks were up at the same time. We still have the yield curves that we follow that remain inverted. We're positive with sentiment. We did tick up. We had come in at 67. We ticked up to 69 with the up day. Our trend is still positive, but the ADX is really having a difficult time deciding if it wants to go above or below the moving average. It's still pretty much below it, since that's what we default back to, but we're still above 20, so we are in a trending environment, and the green line is on top, so we're in a positive trending environment, but a weakening trend at the same time. With the update, <clears throat> our bias is positive, and I've changed our momentum back to positive. So the economic reports that came out, we had the NFIB small business optimism. It came in at 89.4, a little bit lower than the 89.9 that we saw last time. Here's the big one. CPI came in as expected with the headline number. Last time it came in up 0.3%. 
This was what could have just freaked out the markets. This is the core CPI, and this is what the Fed pays attention to. This is what the market really focuses on. It came in up 0.4%. They expected it to be up 0.3%. Last time it was up 0.4%. And this is what I'm talking about. The shelter index is expected to lessen in the coming months. And so the market went, okay, well, we're probably going to see it coming down in the future, so we won't worry about it today. Here's a chart showing the optimism index where it's positive, it's an 89, but it has been coming down lately, suggesting that small business owners are not as optimistic as they had been. Here's the year-over-year -year CPI. First, we'll look at the blue line, which did tick up slightly, and then we look at the core, which is coming down. And it's the yellow line. That's the one that the market really pays attention to. Here's services and commodities on a year-over-year -year basis, where we are declining with the services when you take out energy and the core <clears throat> commodities pretty much flattened out, but they're still slightly below zero. Here's our chart showing how we're changing over time. We're pretty much flat here with the 12 month rate of change, but we are showing an increase when we look at the one month rate of change. Here's the core CPI, which continues to go down when we go back year over year, and it did decline on a year over year basis on this chart. Couple of interesting charts from Isabel Net. This is Goldman Sachs and what they're predicting interest rates are going to be for the 10 year, where the market is pretty much anticipating that we're going to be right about where we're at right now at 4.09% or above that now. But by the end of 2024, Goldman Sachs thinks it will be at the 4% level. And then this is small caps positioning. We are seeing more folks getting into this and not necessarily extreme. There's a real optimism about small caps because they're the last area to really kick into gear. You can make a case for that because these are smaller companies that tend to do better when the economy's doing better. But at the same time, interest rates are pretty high and they have to borrow a lot of money and then they have to refinance what they borrow sometimes. And that really bites into their overall earnings. Plus, small caps, they're small. So not all these companies are going, going to be real successful. There's a few that will, but you still see people seeing that as an opportunity. And so we're seeing more people getting into small cap positions. I found a couple of charts. Now, this is a chart that I do show. This is the 10-year minus the two-year. Over the weekend, when I do the videos, I show the whole, all the yield curves and a bunch of different charts. This is just breaking down one of those charts. The reason I brought this up is we've been inverted now <clears throat> for 423 consecutive trading days. That's the longest we've ever seen the 10 to the two-year remain inverted. What we're waiting to see is if it goes back above this zero line, back to more of a normal type of relationship, then that usually begins the countdown to see, are we going to head into a recession? And it's usually about a five-month window or so if we're going to go into a recession. <clears throat> After we go back to being normal here, that's the time frame that we're looking at. <clears throat> Sorry, I have to keep clearing my throat here. And... What we're seeing in the, the financial media, and I, I have to tell you, I don't watch the financial media. I used to live watching CNBC from sunup to sundown. I just found it useless. If I do watch anything, it's probably Bloomberg. Um, so, But I, I just don't watch it myself. But there's a real increase that we're seeing over here on the right-hand side that they're starting to talk about stock bubble mentions. And even though it's been higher than this before, it has been increasing lately, and this gives them something to talk about. And when the market goes up, you have to have folks that come in and state these things. Here's our intraday chart where we did gap up right at the open, and the market was a little bit confused. It didn't know really how to read this whole CPI report. So we started off above R1. We came down to the unchanged level. And it looked like maybe we were going to break negative. We ended up not doing that. We were able to pick back up, get back above R1. We actually went above R2. We came up to this 5170 level, and then that's when we fell back. R R2 ended up being support now. And this was later in the day when we saw a lot of buying coming into the market. We got all the way up to R3 and then closed just a little bit below that. Here's the intraday chart 
where we were seeing a lot of positive action in the initial overnight session. Things were positive. Then Europe opened. The future still remained quite positive. Here's when CPI came out and the gyration that took place. Here's where we went into the close, and we're not seeing much of a change in the initial overnight session. This is not all that encouraging here. Growth had a great day, but not enough for the blue line to get back above the red line on the intraday chart that we look at. And we did see an improvement, though, with the S&P growth to value ratio. It really picked up. It has a ways to go to get back to these previous levels, but it is showing some improvement. So on our end of day chart, where growth was up 1.92%, or value was up 0.18%. So large cap growth did really well. Mid cap growth was also up compared to value. And small cap growth was down, but down a lot less than we saw small cap value. And so we're looking at our growth to value ratios. Here's for the small caps, not really breaking out, but not really falling apart at the same time. Mid cap showing a little bit more of a bounce, looking better when we look at the index itself. And it is also in a longer term uptrend with this ratio. And we did bounce back up with S&P growth to value. And we're in a longer term uptrend here, but we haven't broken out above this previous high. This is a kind of a disappointment here where discretionary was up. Staples ended up being up as well, even though we've seen a recent death cross here with the equal weight ETF. We ticked up just a little bit when we look at the ratio between discretionary and staples. And this the ADX is really kind of confused right now, kind of like our oscillators. This one is still pretty much right on top of its moving average. The green line is on top, but now we've gone back above 40. So this is when we get a little bit concerned. It doesn't mean that things are going to automatically reverse. This is just giving us an extreme positive reading. Turning up a little bit, but still pretty much on top of the moving average with our short-term chart. Also, the green line is on top, but it's also above 40. We did see a decrease in volume. That It's okay to have that on a down day if you're positive on the market. It's not a good thing to have that on an up day. Looking at sentiment, we did come down with the update with the VIX, both looking at the line chart and the bar chart. We still are seeing this series of higher lows with the VIX, and we haven't broken below that at least yet. We did see a decrease in the volatility of the VIX with the up day. We fell with the bar chart as well as the line chart. We're still looking positive here with the MACD, showing the momentum of the VIX continues to be positive or up, even though it did roll over in Tuesday's session. We saw the equity put call ratio was pretty much flat on the daily chart, and we're just barely starting to turn back down here. You probably need a magnifying glass to see this, but it is ticking down slightly. Our advanced decline line, this is one of the stronger areas right now. We continue to go up, and we were going up even on down days, both based on price and volume. So that internal measure is looking pretty strong. We did see a, a real contraction of the new highs, but they're still really exceeding the new lows. We're on top of the moving average with the five period, and we're starting to flatten out with the 10 period. This is also showing that volume is looking pretty healthy right now. The advanced decline ratio is above zero, and we are seeing a series of higher lows here, as even when we've been having down days. Accumulation distribution did turn back up and is above the moving average. We saw a bit of a bounce here with the chicken money flow. This was giving us some concern. If it can keep going back up and the red line can turn and go back up, that would be more positive. We did turn up a bit with the chicken oscillator. We're still above zero, so it's positive. And when we look at the cumulative advanced decline line for the S&P based on price, that's breaking out. We're just about coming back to previous highs when we look at this based on volume. But for right now, this is looking fairly healthy. The NYSE cumulative advanced decline line is continuing to go up, and we're also seeing the NYSE advanced decline line going up. This other advanced decline line is also advancing as well, so that's showing some broad market support. Even though the S&P outperformed, the broad market did have a fairly good day. And then when we look at the common stock based on price, we continue to go up, and we're also continuing to break out based on volume here. Looking at our advanced decline line studies where we were up with the NYSE, we were 
just still breaking out with the S and P. We were flat to slightly declining with the mid caps, and we were down with the small caps. Here's our daily chart. We haven't quite been able to get back up to this trend line yet. I have another breakout chart to show you. The concerning part here is we saw a solid update with a decrease of below average volume. And we might have overdone it from Monday to Tuesday. We're above this blue line again. Now we can still go higher than this, but when we get up into this area, that's where we think, hmm, maybe we've gone up kind of far, kind of fast. The Williams percent R, one of our short term indicators here is now looking extreme positive. We have the CCI 14 and the CCI 20. They are on the list. You could make a case. We're setting a series of higher highs in the shorter term. We're setting a series of lower highs so far anyway. I, I don't use the CCI as much. I've done a lot of research on the CCI, but I've concluded that it, it just doesn't live up to what it's supposed to do. But that's just my conclusion that I've reached. We're keeping an eye on the 20 period moving average study. Just in case we start to see some weakness, we'll be watching this level. We're still extreme with the 20 period exponential 50 and 200. Now we could go higher than this and we've gone higher than this before, but when we get above these blue lines, that won't. that's when we start to take notice. The force index is crossed back above its midpoint right now, even though the midpoint's still declining. And with our stochastics, we're extreme in the short, short term. We are declining and not really extreme in the intermediate short term. We're turning back up below the moving average, but we are extreme positive in the long, short term. And we're not necessarily extreme with our standard deviations chart. We're right on the border between the plus two and plus three channel. Intermediate term, we are looking a little more positive with the balance of power and we're above zero. This is interesting. We've actually switched over to a lighter shade of blue here with the go no go system. That usually doesn't happen on an up day, but it's picking up something for right now. Now, if we have another up day or even after this, this bar can redraw and actually change color. We are looking good with our highest high value. We're above the advancing move uh, midpoint, and we're still looking more positive with the TTM squeeze with the lighter shade of blue. The ease of movement is starting to go back up. It's showing the path of least resistance for right now continues to be positive. The Arun didn't change. It's actually coming down after giving us an extreme positive reading. We did decline a little bit here with the S&P McClellan oscillator. Solid update. And to see this go down, that's a little bit of a warning sign. But we're still above zero. So the summation index based on price and volume continue to go up. And volume is actually looking more solid when we compare these two lines. We declined a little bit with the NYSE McClellan oscillator, but we're still above zero. So the summation index based on price and volume continue to go up, and we're looking a little better with volume. That's more positive. The Swanland Trading Oscillator advanced based on price and volume, and they're above zero. That's positive. And we're just kind of floundering around here with the PMO. We are positive when we look at the breakout, look, down, look at by looking just at price and at volume, we saw a bit of an uh, improvement here with the PMOs that are rising. We're actually turning down slightly with the buy signals, and we're starting to get extreme positive with the PMOs that are above zero. We went from being neutral back over to positive with the Elder's Impulse System for the S&P. We're still positive with the Parabolic SAR. The slope is trying to look a little more positive, but it's giving us an extreme reading, and we're also seeing a longer-term negative divergence here. The MACD, it's coming back up to its moving average, but it hasn't crossed yet. So we're still getting a mixed picture with very high readings pretty much across the board right now. Our oscillators just aren't helping us all that much. And here's another look at the 20-period moving averages and all the different moving averages that we plot. We're still above all of them. We saw the BPI go up. The bullish percent index is above 70 and advancing. For right now, that's positive. It can go up higher than this and still be positive. But if we come down and drop below 70, that would be more negative. And we also saw just a little bit of a tick up with the NYSE bullish percent index. And we were pretty much flat with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. We're still looking positive with the money flow index. We're above 50 and advancing. The ultimate oscillator is turning back up and is also above 50. 
We are seeing a bit of an improvement here with the Vortex, but we're still seeing the series of lower highs as the S&P has been going up. We're looking positive and not extreme with the RSI 14 as well as the RSI 9. And since we had the update, we're above an advancing moving average with on balance volume. We're, and I broke these down into individual charts. <clears throat> these are S&P 500 stocks, the percent of stocks that are above their 20 period moving average. We're kind of negating this negative divergence that we've been seeing, but we're starting to get to an extreme reading, even though it can go higher than where it is right now. Then we look at the 50 period. It declined on an update. Kind of a strange thing. This is the one that hasn't been showing as much improvement here. We are also seeing this negative divergence with this going down as the S&P has been going up. Then I also included a new one. That's why I broke it down into multiple charts. This, these are stocks above their 100 period simple moving average. And we're above this 80% level. So we're getting an extreme positive reading here. We never did really see much of a negative divergence with that. And we're also coming down just a little bit with stocks above their 200 period moving average. And we pretty much now have negated that negative divergence that we were seeing. The copy curve is just maybe a little bit above its moving average now. The chicken or the Sean trend meter did turn back up and is looking somewhat extreme positive. So when we look at things based on our trend measuring tools, the different charts that we use, we are positive with the hike and ashy with an open candle. We're pointing back up and positive with the Kiggy chart. The Ranko chart is positive and the three line break is positive. Long term, we're not quite back up to this trend line that we've been really following here. This may act as some kind of overhead resistance. If we can get back above this trend channel, that would be quite positive. And I had to adjust this. It seems to change on the charts that I use. I thought it was going to be Thursday, March 14th. We would see a new cycle. I hovered over this again, and now it's saying it'll be March 18th. So that's going to be off in the ne next week when we start a new 50-day cycle. And we're looking at the weekly chart. We are above this R1 resistance level. That's positive longer term. As long as we can stay above that, that really helps to negate this overhead resistance. And when we look at our 150 and 200 period moving averages, we did come down, but we're still looking extreme positive. We're still, still looking quite positive with the Keller market model across all the time frames and across the different indexes. We're still looking fairly positive here with the decision point signals. And we had more blue or green than red than what we saw the day before. I think there was some erroneous data because I was, they were just, it's like somebody hit the, they held down the button and it just kept reprinting the same things over and over. This looks a little bit more sane with these readings here. The equal weight is still doing quite well. In fact, probably doing a little bit better than the S&P weighted index, even though when we, well, I guess when you look at this, we did go back up a little bit. So because the mega caps and the bigger stocks did have a good day, but lately this has been coming down. And we were up with the Dow. We were able to get back above this pivot point. And we've remained positive with the Elder's Impulse system when looking at the diamonds. We haven't set a new high yet with the NASDAQ, but we did have an up day up over 1.5%. And we also had a solid day up 1.5% with the NASDAQ 100, but not enough to set a new all-time high. We are watching this R1 level. These pivot points seem to be pretty important when it comes to the NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100. We are positive after being negative with the QQQs when looking at the Elder's Impulse system. But when you look at momentum, we're still negative and we're seeing a negative divergence here. A little bit longer term, if you go back to the end of December, we're also seeing another more pronounced negative divergence as we've been pretty much going up here with the NASDAQ 100, but it's been doing an awful lot of sideways action as well. Following the QQQs, we did find some support again here at the 20 period moving average, and we were able to bounce up off of that. We're still keeping an eye on our ratio between the NASDAQ 100 and the Dow. We're now a little bit above this red line right now. This takes a long time to develop, so we'll just have to keep our eye on this. Small caps, of course, they were down, and they pretty much have been chopping sideways here with the S&P index. 
we switched over to being neutral a couple of days ago and we we remain neutral now for the small caps looking at the elders impulse system the russell's been looking a little bit better but it was also down even though we are above 50 with the rsi we have a longer term uptrend the momentum is now potentially crossing over and starting to go negative the mid caps were able to get right back up to this pivot point here and they've been showing a little bit more strength but they still remain neutral with the elders impulse system when looking at the mid caps. Google, we came down here and we're able to bounce up off of the 200 day moving average. And so that's showing some improvement here. We're looking at a potential death cross though when we look at a 50 period moving average and a 200 period moving average when looking at this chart of Apple, even though it was up slightly. And Tesla is still below both moving averages and seeing a recent death cross. The FANG index pretty much been chopping sideways. It was up two and a quarter percent here, but hasn't necessarily, it's got a little ways to go to set a new all-time high. The financial sector was up and continues to be positive, where we were up with the New York Community Bank, still waiting to see if any other banks are going to come out saying that they're also having problems. The dollar index actually ended up bouncing a little bit here, but it's still in a longer term downtrend. And then we were up with the 10-year. When we look at the yield, we were down with the 10-year looking at price. We're coming back down to the 50-day moving average. And then growth to value ratio is not a real big improvement here with QQQs to the S&P. It turned up, but we're still below the moving average. We're still declining when we compare discretionary to the S&P. We saw a bit of a bounce with large cap growth versus large cap value, but we're still under a now declining moving average. So a little bit of an improvement with the large caps. Mid caps are back up to their moving average, and we're just a little bit above the moving average with the small caps. Longer term, though, the five-period moving average of our highs minus the lows across the broad market is still positive. And our 10-period average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows are still giving us an extreme positive reading and has been for quite some time. So what's our outlook? We're positive with our technicals, but we are rising on lower volume, and that is like a basic rule of technical analysis. You want to be careful when that's happening. We're still above that longer-term overhead resistance at about the 5111 level, and we do have positive seasonality for Wednesday's session, but we're potentially coming in, and I keep saying potentially, and we never seem to really do that. March tends to have some weakness at some point, and we just want to be aware of that. We're going to get the MBA Mortgage Applications Index. That's really the only report that I follow that will be coming out. We want to keep an eye on the different geopolitical events. And then in Thursday's session, we're going to get PPI and retail sales. On Friday, we're going to get industrial production and capacity utilization, as well as consumer sentiment. Here's the other chart. These are things that I usually don't cover, the crude oil inventories. And sometimes I might mention the bond auction if it has a big impact on the market. Seasonality. We do look pretty positive. The Dow is neutral to positive, where the S&P and NASDAQ are positive for March 13th. We are in options expiration week because we started on a Friday. That was the first day of March. That's pushing options expiration. It appears to be happening sooner than what it usually does. But we en end up usually being up more than down during options expiration week. Looking at seasonality here during an election year, we do see a little bit of a downtick here with the green dashed line. And we'll be on the ninth trading day of the month. This is the week seasonality that historically has happened at some point, but we don't seem to be really following that very much. We also see the weak seasonality during an election year when the current president is running for re-election. Wednesday tends to be the most negative day of the week. So we have a number of different historical forces that are looking positive and negative kind of at the same time. And Tom Bally's research shows that we're coming into the part of March where we may see some positive seasonality. So our warning signs, the S&P did advance on below average volume. We still have our list of negative divergences, even though some of them are improving, especially when we look at our moving average studies. But these other ones are still giving us some concern for right now, especially the transports. They just, they're just flattening out here. You, it just seems like 
for transports, they're sure not going anywhere. They should be going somewhere since they're transports. And we have to be respectful of possible weak seasonality. The positive signs, I switched this back over to the positive slide here. The equity put call ratio based on five periods is turning down slightly now. That is positive. The parabolic SAR is positive. We're not quite sure what to make of the copic curve. The vortex is positive, but we're still seeing it kind of looking tired right now. Small and mid-cap growth is positive, but it's been lagging behind here. And the financial sector is positive. So our conclusion, we're positive, but we're rising on lower volume. We're above that overhead resistance. We are dealing with potentially a period of weak historical seasonality. And we just want to keep an eye on, is weakness starting to creep into the market? Now, a lot of that was kind of pushed aside in Tuesday's session with the solid up day, but it could come back in. So we just want to be aware of that. In the short term, this is what we're really keeping an eye on for right now. In the intermediate term, we do have a little bit longer list of extreme positive indicators. And in the long term, we're also looking extreme positive, but we are still positive nonetheless. Thank you. I really hope you have a great day and I will talk to you in the next video.